Hello, how are you guys today? I got another video that you might be interested in. Today we're going to work with Photoshop. Have any of you guys ever heard of Photoshop? Well, I've got Photoshop, a hard copy still that, you, that I bought a long time ago. You kept upgrading it and upgrading it and upgrading it. And every time you upgrade it was $299. And after a while, you decided to put it in the cloud that you got to rent it. And now, I sit here with no support whatsoever. So, I'm thinking about going to Lightroom instead of Photoshop. But I'm going to see how long it, this lasts because it works alright. But as the technology gets more and more and our operating systems keep changing sooner or later, this software is not going to work. So, to cut through all the chase, uh, I've got a person that gave me uh, an image off his cell phone. He calls it his prize shot of his dog. And uh, I gotta admit, it looks really nice. The only problem is, is that, and you'll see as I get into the video, we run into some problems. The difference between cell phone versus a real camera. So you're gonna learn today what that's all about. So I'm not going to say let's get into it, although I did say that because that line is done by somebody else, but how about if we just, uh, let's fly into it. Does that sound better? Alright, let's roll with it. Okay, here we are ready to do a project in Photoshop. Today we're going to do an uh, image that was sent to me from a friend off his cell phone and we're going to print this on canvas for him uh, believe it or not it can be done but you got to have a large capacity printer to do it which I have so I'm going to show you folks why I'm making this video number one let's bring in a couple images here and I want to show you what's going on all right, I've got this image here, and I've got the one we're going to get off the cell phone. All right, what I want to show you here is the difference between an iPhone or an Android. I don't care what it is. They're all pretty much the same. If you look here, we're already at 66.6%, well, 66.67% for our resolution. All right, if you go to 100%, you don't want to see any pixelization. And we're already getting that off of the cell phone image. We're already getting it, OK? So now, let's go with another image here. Now, this image happens to be shot with a about a $24,000 camera. This has, it's a Canon 1DS Mark II. Uh, it has an L-series lens, a 70 millimeter. But this shot here was taken with my white lens, which is a 200 millimeter. And I'm not sure where we were at, at that for millimeters on this particular shot, but what I want to show you is that if you look at the percentage, if you watch my mouse where it's going, we're only showing 25% so far. And look at how big that image is. All right, now if I take it up to 100% and I put it on the cars, there's no loss of any quality at all. There's no pixelization or anything. I mean, you might see it not look as good on YouTube as I'm seeing it, but you should be able to see the difference between the two of them. So my point is, making this video, is I want all you guys to understand that, especially the younger generation today, you buy cell phones, smartphones, and you think you got it made because it's got this just a terrific camera in it. You know, you're going to get some great shots. 
yeah, you can get some great shots, but all you're going to be able to do is just post them to Facebook or maybe Instagram. Everybody's happy, right? But what if you go out and you get a picture like this here? This guy thinks this is a pretty neat picture. He wants to put this on his wall. He wants me to make it big, but I'm limited. I can only go so big before it starts crumbling and coming apart. So you see my point? You know, whatever happened to the real cameras? It seems like nobody wants to buy them. Nobody wants to use them. It's all dedicated to the smartphone. That's all everybody uses today. For pictures, they're constantly on there for Facebook. They're constantly on there for doing texting. It's just a whole different attitude than what I'm used to. You know, what happened to the conversation of sitting around and just talking or getting on the phone and talking to a person? Everybody's got a text. That's all they do. Well, let's move on. There's no sense of bellering about that stuff. I mean, I'm just trying to, to sit, uh, send a point across so you guys understand what the difference is between the camera quality. Now, anyways, on this image, what I'm going to do is I'm going to print it on canvas and see what we get. So the first thing we got to do is we got to rotate the image. So we're going to rotate the image. And the reason we rotate the image is to save on canvas space because canvas is very expensive. There's not a lot of ink that goes on the canvas, but the canvas costs a lot. Now, when you're printing on, on uh, photographic paper, it's the opposite. The paper's cheap, the ink is expensive because you put more ink on the on the paper. Now you can do one step further if you want, if you got a lot of money, you can buy a software program it's called a ripping software, which what this does, it allows you to dial in more ink to be transferred to the canvas. Well that's about a five thousand dollar option for the software. It's nothing that I would want to do at this time. I used to have all this stuff back when I was working for another uh, partner back about 13 years ago when I got into this and I used to have a 44 inch printer and uh, I use this small one now at home. I kept this one and this uh, allows me to have fun and to just uh, screw around and print stuff what I want to print and then if I got a friend that wants something printed I can print it. So it's nice to have around. But the problem is, is that it's so outdated that I can't even get uh, firmware updates anymore on it. And I can't even get uh, ICC profiles for color management. So I have to let the printer manage the colors, which I'm lucky because the paper that I'm using is all Epson products. Now the canvas that I'm using today is not Epson. But we ended up hitting it pretty lucky because this particular company follows Epson pretty close so when we print this it turns out to be very accurate I'm really surprised so let's move on and show you how we get it to the printer so first of all we want to check and see what size this image is all right we got our inches and we got a 72 is all this came in at off the telephone or off, I shouldn't say telephone that's old technology it came off the cell phone the smartphone okay now, I'm 62 years old you know I gotta stay with you guys you know you're young guys all right so resolution 72 we want to kick it up to about 150 what that does is it boost the signal a little bit and we can get a little bit more tighter pattern as it prints the image okay so now what we got to do up here is we got to change the width to 16 inches because we're going to print it 16 tall and it's going to be 12 high so we got everything done on that part and you see that it's really pixelated well it's not going to print it that big that's just the display that it made if we go back and we get this back down to where it's workable, see we're gonna we're gonna be somewhere around there. So 
So, all right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put this out of the way for right now. All right. Now we're going to grab a brand new palette, which is like putting a piece of paper in front of you. And then we're going to drag the image and, and lay it down on top of it. And I'll show you how that works. Let me hit File. We hit New. And remember, the resolution I had to print before is 150. Correct? Yep, 150. All right. Our width, we have to change this to inches. All right. So now we're going to go 24 inches because our printer is 24 inches wide. And we're going to go 12 inches high, but we got to add 4 inches to that. So we got to make that 16. Let's make it 17 just to be safe. All right. So we got 150 resolution, 17 and 24. So we hit OK. We're going to bring our palette up here. Drag it up there. All right. And then we're going to click on this guy here. We're going to get our move tool. And then we're going to drag this guy up into here. And then we're going to center it where we think we need that. I've experienced on this Mac for some reason. We got more on left and right than we do top and bottom. And the reason for that is because we're 16 inches on a 24 inch piece of paper. So we do have a ruler up here. We can draw lines if we wanted to, but it's not that important. You know, uh, technically you only need an inch and a half for borders. You know, I'm just making it safe, making it bigger than you need. You can always trim it with a scissors later. All right, now the next important thing we want to do is these two images are stacked on top of each other, so it becomes a large file. So now we have to put it all together, so we have to flatten our image. So we take the layer and we flatten the image. Now that puts it all together, so now it's one item. So now we're going to go and we're going to set up the printer. We're going to go to File, and we're going to say Print. All right, now here's where we run into a little trouble. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this. We're going to let Printer manage colors. Now, we also have an option of Photoshop managing colors. But we can't let Photoshop manage colors because we no longer have the firmware for this printer because it's outdated. So I have to pretty much throw the printer away or I have to spend hours and hours on the phone trying to figure out how Epson can make their ICC profiles work with Photoshop with this printer. And I'm not about to do that because it's not worth it. So I'm going to let printer manage colors. Now this ICC profile you see here is actually the ICC profile for this media that I've got, this canvas. It won't work. When I use it, what happens is that no ink lays down. It's printing away and nothing's happening. So between Epson and Mac and all the firmware stuff, there's something going on that they need to sort out and they're not really interested because it's 13 years old. So screw me, they don't want nothing to do with me. So I got to put up with just printing off, letting printer manage colors. So, but anyways, we're safe because whoever designed this canvas did a really good job. They're really close to Epson. So I can actually get by with this. This prints very accurate. I'm really amazed. So basically now what we're going to do is we're going to go to printer settings and we're going to do the pull down arrow and we're going to go to printer settings. All right. Now it just so happens canvas is already in there. We're using roll paper. We're already at the highest resolution. And let me explain how the resolution works. If I chose 720, what would happen is when the heads go across the canvas and lay the ink down, it's going to lay the ink down going left to right 
and also right to left, which makes it very fast. And you're going to lose DPI, which is dots per inch. Now, if I choose to go with 1440, it only prints one way, comes back empty. Prints the other way again, and comes back empty. Prints again, comes back empty. That way it gets a more precise way of putting the ink down, which the DPI becomes a higher resolution, which makes a more finer print. I'm sure you guys are not with me on this because this is stuff way over your head, except for the guys that are into this, that do this kind of printing. I just thought it would be entertainment for you guys on my channel. I know that I, I do things that pertain to visiting Wisconsin, things to do in Wisconsin, but right now I can't get out of town because, not too far anyway, I can get out of town, but I can't go too far because we're always dealing with the, the threat of snow, and I'm a snow plower, so I can't really go away for a weekend without knowing it's going to snow. So back to this again. Now we're going to save this out. And we're all set to go. You can see 24 inches by 17 inches tall. So it's good to go. Now all we got to do is hit the printer. And we're all set to go. There we go. Now you're not going to see anything on the screen. Okay, I'm going to let you guys see what it looks like now that it's printing on the uh, Epson Style Pro 7600. Uh, if you look at one of my previous videos, it shows how we set this up for printing on canvas. We had to change the heads to be able to adapt to the wide uh, selection because the heads have to be off of the paper a certain distance, otherwise you wreck the heads because canvas is thicker than paper. So this is why we do this. Now I'm going to uh, pause the camera and then I'll uh, take you into the print as it gets a little further along. There you can see it coming out the bottom there. You see it's printing pretty well. When we get this all printed, I'll, uh, I have to cut it with the scissors and then I'll lay it on on a flat surface and I'll show you the quality after we're done here. And I'll pause it again here and then we'll, I'll show you the finished results what it looks like just before we cut it off. Okay, it's spitting it out now. Looks like it's just about ready. And it advances it. Now I gotta cut that by hand because if you use the cutter that's built in the machine it wouldn't take long and you direct the the cutter because the cutter is not designed to cut canvas is only made to cut paper so uh, I'm going to cut this off and then I'll be back with you okay there's the finished product and I got the tape measure up there and you can see it's 16 inches I'm sure it's 12 inches across the printer doesn't lie. I think we got some pretty good quality out of it coming from a cell phone. So 